Um, talking about reaching your dreams and doing what you want to do. Um, so I was at my night, um, Labertees at the Heathcote and Star, um, the other weekend on Saturday. Sorry, um, that just passed. It was a fucking good night. Here it is. There, I'll show it up on the screen. I usually list all my events on on high R A. R A is a good place to list all my events because you know it's kind of uh, access of kind of you know living breathing archive of, of all the gigs I've played in my life and stuff. Um, well, not all of them, but since kind of like post um my days at Alibi, and these are kind of all going back from 2016. So that's when the Alibi sort of stuff stops around 2014, I think, or 15 was it. And this is kind of me kind of doing my own thing from then on. So I've been kind of doing my own thing for uh, one, two, three, four years, basically, essentially, right? Outside of the alibi stuff, right? I've been doing myself kind of like near on four years. And um, one of those kind of nights I've been fortunate enough to do was at a Heathcote and Star called Labertees. It's a bit annoying because, you know, I usually get called in last minute, not come to cover for people, but, you know, that is the nature of the beast. Um, I'm kind of in my infancy. I'm not some, I don't really have much of a name. But, you know, by and large, I'm kind of slowly and surely be get, getting better and better and better. I'm honing my craft a lot. And I think in the beginning, the whole idea of me doing it was that I wanted to go somewhere and play for just regular folk, right? I, I always thought in my head that I knew I could kill it playing in the warehouse, playing for Dawson people. I know I can do that thing. I know because I've done it before. So special um, in my night, I did the alibi, the stuff I used to do at the corner shop. I've done it previously before. And I also know that even just with just effort and research, I could probably figure it out, right? Because most of those sets are like 30 minutes. No, sorry, I like between 50 to an hour and a half, right? So not that long. And if you know what you're doing, you can usually smash those sets quite easily. Um, but there's a real skill and a real ability in order to play a whole night, right? That's like two plus hours, really kind of cultivate the soundscape of the room. And I guess with me being a big fan of Berlin and, and, and that kind of techno scene and seeing the kind of appreciation for DJs they have there, especially resident DJs, it seemed like this was the perfect path that I wanted in order to kind of, in, in order to have, have like a long career, right? If I wanted to be a, a trendy flash in the pan kind of person, I'm sure I could have done that now. I probably wouldn't be comfortable to do it, but I'm sure if I wanted to do it, I could, right? In terms of wearing a wacky outfit, have an interesting name, maybe, you know, having a sense of style, uploading weird and interesting mixes. There could be a way I could, I could have done it quite easily. Um, getting a show on NTS, those kind of things. There's a way that you could do it to be kind of like a scene dude. But I always wanted to be like the career DJ guy, right? I mentioned before to my friend the other day, I was saying, I'd rather be like a move D, right? Than a trendy hip hop, than a trendy sort of like DJ guy in the scene. Because a move D, even though he's not maybe well known outside of the heads that know about electronic music, he's booked at all the big festivals. He plays regularly in all the big cities that every DJ wants to play, in, especially the ones that have, you know, a bit of credibility or want to be recognized as good DJs in the scene. And generally, he gets to kind of do what he wants to do on his own kind of time and effort. Um, but of course, if you're the senior, if you're a social media trendy person, you also get the benefit of loads of brand endorsements, right? You're paying your Peggy Goo, you get Nike putting billboards over you all over the place, you get brands wanting to work with you to make a clothing line you get loads of things that come your way but of course that's not something that i kind of think has a lot of longevity right that kind of stuff is sort of flashing the pan because the next hot young thing that comes up would essentially take you off their perch um so um Labertis has been a great opportunity for me to kind of do my thing and do it in that way and I think time and time again, I'm kind of learning how to do things. There's an, it was a, there's an interesting challenge that I face now at that night where essentially Liberties is in a Heathcote and Stars in Leightonstone. They've got a great um, beer garden in the back, right? And obviously the weather's warming up a bit, so it's usually quite busy in it. So on Saturday, like even on most days anyway, Friday, Saturday, whenever, whenever they have DJs on there, you have to be quite careful of how you play because the outside area closes at 10 o'clock, I'm going to say, right? And I start at 9. So you've got an hour to kind of play some good tunes. Um, they don't have a speaker outside in the garden because obviously of the sound complaints and stuff in London, draconian laws. But you have to kind of play enough good tunes that the people that are inside the, that are outside the garden who are coming back in to take a piss or get a beer or order some food, they can be like, oh, this guy's actually playing some good music. And then once they close the, the beer garden and they make everyone come in, you want to hold their attention as they're walking through the bar because the beer garden's right at the back. They pass through the kind of games room. They pass through me playing DJ and the doors at the end. So I'm kind of right in the middle. So you're kind of wanting to hold their attention as they kind of walk through the bar. So it's been a challenge all these times to kind of like, you know, how do I start? What do I play? And I guess this time around, I kind of was like, you know what? We're just going to go in hard. I went in hard and started out you know, 120 BPM playing disco stuff and new disco things. There's some uh, some new cuts that I've had that I wanted to play for a while. And it kind of really worked, right? And that was, again, experience from playing in Dawson and having that kind of experience. But what really was exciting about playing there was that I kind of, the first time I played like um, Old Town Road by Little Nas X, right? And again, it's... um. 
it's a bit of a meme you know it's a song that kind of blew up on tiktok it's a song that has now kind of garnered some extra legs with the addition of billy ray Siler, billy ray cyrus on the track but it's something quite beautiful about that track that i just can't i just can't describe maybe it's because of my infatuation with um blood orange kind of you know um using the kind of cowboy motifs maybe it's the fact that I've been listening to a lot of Solange and her kind of, you know, of course, their background, Beyonce Solange, their background of being from Houston and that and that kind of um, down south cowboy motif. Maybe it's the Travis Scott thing as well. He has a lot of horse riding. There's, a, there's been something in my head that's been kind of swaying me towards country music for a while, right? And I think a few years ago, I used to watch the CMAs quite regularly. I download it off a, on, on Pirate Bay, like, you know, however many gigabytes it was and watch it at home. And just I just like, you know, again, being a DJ, I think, is great because it just makes you curious about different kinds of music. You just want to just see what all the hype's about. You might not like everything, but you like to hear it. Um, I forgot the band that Pharrell collaborated with, but Pharrell even produced um, a few tracks on an album for a, a, a group. I forgot their name. Who should I remember the name? I played a track of theirs a couple of times in my sets too. Um, either way, it got me really interested in the kind of apex of the situation. Uh, police driving past as per most things that happen in society the apex of it was the culmination of it was this kind of track by Lil Nas X right and I got a chance to play it um during my set at Liberties and it went off so fucking well man people love the song they absolutely loved it and again man it's just there's something I think there's something quite beautiful about being able to play a song like that in a bar or pub with people who aren't hipsters and they just love the song some of them might have heard some of them might not have heard I'm not sure how it gets because again I don't listen to UK radio I might glance at the billboard charts here and there, but again, they're mostly to do with the US. So I don't really know how it's, what traction is picking up in the UK, if any, but they could really feel the vibe and they knew what they, they kind of liked it straight away, right? Um, and it's just like a, it's just like a really great moment to be in that situation and just feel, you know, feel as if like I've gotten to a place where now I'm playing the things that I want to play to a crowd that probably wouldn't want to hear what I want to play, but because I'm being able, because I'm able to kind of meet them in the middle with some of the tracks, they kind of trust me that enough that I can play, you know, a little Nas X tune, I can play a 30 minutes Afro beats set, whatever it may be, and I was kind of mixing it up in until the end, I kind of closed out with some garage, but which I don't necessarily like to play, but, you know, I kind of wanted to give them what they wanted. And I think that has been something I've kind of learned and kind of gained over the years, something that I've kind of been really appreciative of, especially on this level. Because, again, I think on paper, most people wouldn't take these sets, you know, they don't pay that much. Um, they're long hours. They're in places that no one would probably want to go to because everyone wants to go to Dorsten and Peckham and Shoreditch and Brixton and New Cross. Everyone wants to go to all the hip areas, maybe Manor House, um, wherever it may be called if you live in West. I don't know where people do in West London. But for the most part, no one will probably take these gigs, right? Because they're not really sexy on paper. But I think for me in general, just as, again, just as being as like a, it's a, it's a fun hobby that, you know, it's a, it's a hobby where they give you free drinks, Sometimes they give you drink tokens at the bar, other places. They give you some money for the time that you've been there. Usually the bartenders are fucking super cool. The bar, I mean, it's just like, a, it's just the best atmosphere for me. Because I think, especially in my past, having come from the service industry background, working um, or playing in a, in, a, in a bar or pub is my home. Because, you know, I probably relate more to service industry people, folk, who are just trying to, you know, earn a wage and go home and do their thing that they actually enjoy than the people that maybe work Monday to Friday in offices who kind of have a bit of an inflated sense of self, right? They think they're changing the world because they're the marketing manager of, I don't know, bounty chocolates and shit. And it's like, mate, not really, do you know what I mean? But service industry people, they're a bit more black and white. They know exactly why they're there, right? They're there because it pays money, it pays well, it pays adequately, um, um, let's say the timetable is quite flexible so if you've got other interests that you want to do you can maybe ask your friend to cover your shift you can maybe ask to come in a bit two hours later it's not stringent as kind of you have to come in nine to five in the office where maybe and also it's, no one takes it too seriously you know you know you're not it's not your lifetime goal to work the rest of your life no one really takes it that seriously but yeah i'm a big fan of it um i love it and again something i've been really really thankful for but i have to really be honest like that little nas x tune went off that um, last Saturday, man, I was so happy to play that again. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, I might play again um, at Tap East this Friday. Um, at Tap East this Friday from an night called Tap, which you can see here on the screen. And again, I'm thinking, should I? I think I might actually put this all on my website. Actually, like all the flyers that I make, they're not, you know, they're not the most um, amazing things in the world, but still, you know, I make them myself. You know, these things that you could, you have to pay somebody some money to do. I think I probably still need to reach out to my. Um, 
to my friend Davey and get him to actually make an actual, what you call it, um, identity or whatever it's called, right? Um, for the actual night itself. But for what it is so far, it looks pretty cool. Um, I like it. Um, so that's tapped happening on Friday 12th uh, at Tap East in Westfall, as you can see for the different flyer. I'm very happy with that. Hopefully, you can put that maybe on a jumper somewhere. But yeah, something I'm always happy about. Something I'm glad to always put out there in the ether. And something that brings me a lot of joy when it comes to going out and that, you know? Because again, I go out, I try to go as much as I can, I try to see DJs as much as I can. But being able to get paid to play these musics and to be on the same platform. Because, okay? you know, for me, it's like, you know, it's a win already. I might not be Nina Kravitz. I might not be Seth Troxler. I might not be uh, Dixon or Kirby or Lobos. But my night's listed on Re Resonant Vibes like everyone else. And my name's listed on there too like everyone else. So what's to tell? You can't tell me I'm not the same. We're the same people. <laughs> He's the zeros that may be a little bit more longer than mine. But we're the same bloody person. I dare you to tell me anything different. 